WTBJ's Florida's first television station debuted a very special children's program in 1957. Few could have imagined what the Skipper Chuck show would mean to our kids in our community now. It's your chance to relive all of those wonderful memories. Mm -hmm. He was handsome then and he's handsome uh -huh. now. So is Ed O'Dell. He's here with some very special guests. Hey, Ed. Hey, you know, old timers, we just keep hanging in there. Uh -uh. Ask someone in their 30s or 40s, 50s or 60s who grew up in South Florida, and they'll tell you about their days watching Skipper Chuck or even appearing on the program at our original studios. The man himself, Skipper Chuck Zink, is joining us this afternoon. Also with us today is uh, Steve Davidson from the uh, Florida Moving Image Archives. We'll start with you, Steve. You're putting on an evening with uh, Chuck Zink uh, this week. Uh, why did you choose, Chuck, and what are you doing? Well, this is part of our Rewind Fast Forward Festival, which offers uh, the public a chance to look back at history and culture and entertainment. And we couldn't think of a more fitting way to open up the festival than with, uh, with Chuck Zink. Of all the calls we get over the years, uh, the most are I was on his show or I watched it on TV. And we just thought it was time to do something to recognize um, really a, a legend and, um, and to have people a chance to, um, to look back and see the old footage and remember their times on the show. Okay. Well, let me start by saying, uh, Chuck Zink, Charles, my hero. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I got my start on the Ch Skipper Chuck show. I was the right hand of the grivet. I was Mr. Prize hand. I was in there with you. He gave me my start. Hey, you know, I, it's news. They see, we bring it to you. Uh, unfortunately, they have footage of me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that is, yes, indeed, uh, Ed O'Dell. Eddie O'Dell. You remember those days? You remember when you invited me on Chuck? Right? Well, not not completely, <laughs> because most people don't realize that that was my father that did the show. <laughs> what was it like? How important was it the, the children's format back in those days? Oh, it was everything. It was, uh, and I mean that sincerely. Before uh, the big D came along, uh, deregulation, uh, it, we had certain guidelines that we we had to follow and we had to do certain things as far as children's programming was concerned and uh, we took it very seriously as seriously as as any program that I see out in the studio tonight and going on the air. The schools became very involved in the shows, the, the, the parents became very involved in the shows. everybody was involved with this show. It, it, I had remember, you know, being there, and people were just so interested in it and, and having their kids involved in it. Well, all I can say in regards to that is that it wasn't the only show in town, mm -hmm. but it was a pretty good show. Uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm. There was a lot of, of, uh, of power that got, went into the show. The station backed me all the way with it. I have to give the station... WTVJ really deserves a lot of credit because they didn't come and and give any directions. It was my show. And you know, because you were around. We, we did a lot of different things. We were talking about a lot of things we did. People still come up to you today? Oh, every day. What do they say? Uh, usually that they were on the show. And, uh, and they have some little... Uh, antidote that they want to share with me and I listen to them mm -hmm. and I have doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs and uh -huh. all kinds of people mm -hmm. and every one of them uh, that it was a highlight in their show. I know one of your proudest things with the Hispanic community so many people learn to speak English the word of the day the letter of the day those kinds of things. Yeah well before that uh, was the, the, the proudest day of my life was the day that the show became uh, totally uh, open. Integrated. You were integrated. The first inter you were the first I was the first show. television show in the United States to integrate a show and uh, uh, that came about because of I happened to hear uh, the secretary that took the reservations ask if the caller was colored and I took it for granted that, that, that we integrated. You know you cannot really realize things and when she hung up I said what did you say? She said, well, I have to say that. Who told you to say that? And a kid from Indiana, one thing led to another. And I went to Mr. Wolfson, and he said, well, you know, it's going to cause some trouble. But he says, you, it's your call. 
You know, uh, it's, it's good to Steve Davidson. Uh, we did something recently, Steve, and I had a young man call me and said, you know, you took some footage of me, where would I find it? I guess this whole look back at Chuck Zink and a lot of things is to get people to realize that they may have some important film in their uh, closet somewhere. Well, that's it also. And unfortunately, although we have a tremendous amount of footage over the years, um, in those days, children's television programs or the cooking shows or the entertainment shows, they weren't saved. So a lot of that was unfortunately destroyed. But this program is bringing back what we do have. But if somebody came to the studio with a home movie camera and shot some film, we'd love to get our hands you know, on, on that as well. And uh, if people call, we'll transfer that to video and preserve that, not show at this time, but for some future programs. But we can't bring the footage back unless we uncover it someplace. So. One of the things I also remember about you, we were talking about, you did a lot of other things. Uh, movies, yes. uh, Miss America, Miss USA, uh, Miss Universe. Miss Universe. I remember you interviewing which president? Was it Nixon? You interviewed a president one time. I mean, you, you did everything. I interviewed three presidents. Three presidents. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower and Mr. Nixon, who dropped in in the studio in the back. <laughs> the people used to come in the back and stand there and watch. Right. That's the day that uh, we uh, asked uh, Ed Sullivan if he'd like to be part of the show. And he said, why not? So we took him over to the door, and the next thing you know, he had a pie in his face. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> the pie in the face. We remember that. He wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> Thanks for the memories. And, Steve, thank you for uh, uh, trying to document those memories, and you did a great job. Uh, South Florida, you can spend an evening with the Skipper Chuck Zink this Thursday from 7 to 9 at the Colony Theater at Lincoln Road on Miami Beach. It's all a part of Rewind Fast Forward Film and Video Festival. For more information, you can call 305-375-1505. Trina? All right, Ed, thank you. I guess we should say thanks for the memories, too. Well, as we all know, SUVs and trucks have been growing bigger and bigger every year. Well, now the minis are arriving as well. I'm not sure whether you would call this a micro machine or car. That's really small. But the new Japanese Mini Q car rolled out today. The electric cars can go up to 30 miles an hour and travel about 50 miles. They run on electricity and only need to be charged overnight. Q car makers expect the car to sell quickly at the mini price of $11,000. The cars will hit the market next April. That's a little bit too small for me. I couldn't get a thigh in that thing. <laughs> a British lab is trying to answer a lot of questions after a couple gives birth to twins that, um, well, it looks as though they're not theirs. That story in two minutes.